Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Robin, you ready? Yep. Definitely. Okay, so a couple of things I want to announce before we get into it. Um, first of all, thank you so much for showing up for this. The energies have been interesting to say the least. So I'm so glad you carved your time out of your day to come to this and figure out about the energies that are present. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, a couple of things I want to mention. Um, where do I want to start? I know where I want to start. First thing I want to start with is announcing this. I'm going to put it in chat is that I know some of you joined me from the Awkwardly Zen event. This is a Tarot, Unicorns, and Coffee um, event. I'm so glad you're here. Um, and we, I am just un unleashing, unveiling a new website for Tarot, Unicorns, and Coffee. I just put the link in the chat. Yay! Um, I want to introduce myself. I am Valerie Lewis. I am one of the hosts for the event today. I am a Tarot reader. Um, a unicorn goddess and a host of other really cool shit that I'm not going to go into right now. And, and co-host Robin Poole, the amazing Robin Poole, who I'm always, always so grateful that she decides to do these with me. Robin Poole is an amazing astrologer, among other things as well. She also does her own readings. And so today, um, today's celebration I want to put this in the chat to begin with because I don't want to be very spammy throughout the whole event, but I do want to give you this information if you are interested or so inclined. Robin also does readings and I do readings. The information is in the chat if you would like to book with us or if you would like more information on that. And also if you're not interested in a reading, but if you would just like to support these moon celebrations going forward, there are ways to donate to both Robin and I listed in the chat. All right, moving right along. So this uh, new moon celebration, for those of you that are new, the way it works is Robin and I are kind of tag team it, so we hand it off. So I'm the beginner. Um, I give the very beginning basic viewpoint of moon energies and what's going on. And then I hand it off to Robin and she gives the more in-depth, amazing astrological views about what's going on. And then it comes back and we talk about rituals. I talk about some very basic rituals that you can do. And then I hand it over to Robin and Robin talks about, again, very amazing in-depth kind of deeper rituals that you can do to work with these energies. So take whatever works with for you, leave behind what doesn't. We like to give you a broad spectrum of picking and choosing which items work for you from both of our perspectives. And then after we go over rituals, we'll end with a guided meditation led by yours truly. And yeah, I think that's about it for our celebration, the, the outline of how it's going to go. Sound good? Everybody good? Good. All right. So let's get into it. This is the new moon in Virgo. I'm trying not to cry, y'all, because there's some, some stuff going on. Uh, new moon in Virgo. So let's talk just a little bit about the new moon in general and what the, that moon phase energy means. So the new moon is the dark moon. It's when you can only see like just a little bit of sliver of the moon. And first, let me start by saying the new moon. That's what I forgot to mention. Er, put the brakes on. Let me go back. The new moon doesn't even happen until Monday. The reason why we are starting to do these um, events before is because we thought it would be a great idea to do the events beforehand so you have time to get together any rituals you want to perform, do anything, any readings that you want to perform before the new moon happens. Also, because this time it just so happened to be divinely inspired that neither one of us were available on the full moon or it may have been, I don't know about Robin, I know I wasn't available on the actual new moon. So it all worked out great. We're going to continue to do these events before the actual moon phase so that it gives you time to incorporate these energies and get any items together you want so that you can perform the rituals on the actual day of the moon. With that being said, this is what I forgot. This is what I left out. The next moon, which is a full moon, happens on a day when I am out of town. Now, Robin will be available, 
So what we are going to do is record the session, just like you've seen us do today, we'll record it. And then Robin will be available. And so on the actual moon celebration day, it will be posted on Meetup. Robin will be leading the discussion. What she will do is she will play, she'll do a screen share and she'll play back our recording. And then she'll be available to answer any questions for you during the next moon celebration. So we're, we're testing that out. We'll see how it goes. Um, okay, so now back on track. Let's talk about this new moon in Virgo. I feel like I'm all over the place. Does anybody else feel like that? It's the moon. It's the moon. I get to blame it on the moon. Whew, okay, so the new moon is when both the moon and the sun are in the same sign, in the same place in the sky, and it's shadowed, and we don't really see it. It's like a, a dark moon. Um, there's only a very little sliver when it actually phases into the new moon where you can see the first sliver of the new moon. But for a while, and during these next couple of days, it's going away, we're only going to see the dark moon. So what does that dark moon mean? For me, I always think of the dark moon, I see it like a chalkboard in the sky. I see it like a blank chalkboard in the sky. It's black, it has nothing written on it. This new moon is the chance for you to take out your little piece of chalk and write on that blank chalkboard and set your intentions for what you want to happen during this next phase when the moon actually grows to its full, its, its full size, when it grows to the full moon. So now is the time, the new moon is the time to set intentions. So a blank chalkboard in the sky, I really like that. Um, the new moon is also dark, we talked about that. It's a dark moon and the dark can represent like the unknown. Like we don't really know what's coming, but we wanna prepare ourselves and we wanna set our intentions for it so that we can work with these energies and be prepared. Darkness is also an opportunity to kind of hermit ourselves, to turn within, and to find those inner, inner calm, inner peace, um, examining our beliefs. Um, it's a chance to really do the work um, to let go as the very, the very last, um, let go of the very last remnants of what we might be holding onto that doesn't serve us. So that when the new moon comes, we're fresh and clean and ready to go and ready to take off. So it's also a time to look within and, um, challenge our self-beliefs, any thoughts or any things that may have been holding us back. It's a time to look within and, and explore those a little more deeply. So with that being said, I'm going to switch over to, I love reading from this deck. It's the Moonology deck by Yasmin Boland. I do believe I said her name correctly. And I'm just going to read what it says about the new moon specifically. And it says, the new moon, a new start is coming. So see that? Look at me dropping the card all over the place. See, doesn't that look like a big old chalkboard in the sky? I love it. I love it. A new start is coming. There is a yes coming your way. This is one of the most auspicious cards in the deck. It's totally positive and suggests something new and exciting is developing. The situation you're asking about is blessed and you are on target to achieve your goals. This is a message from the universe that you're starting all over again in some way. Hold on to that thought, starting all over again in some way, because that, 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 that's, that's a deep one. Um, the message of the, um, okay, be that on a new or better course or just feeling more positive about achieving your desired outcome. If you've been feeling stagnant, we're going to talk about that stagnation. This card reminds you that life goes in cycles. You're moving into a new cycle now. This is the time to wipe the slate clean. If the situation you've asked about has become toxic, either that will clear up now or something totally new and fresh is on its way. A couple of things um, to think about is a new start is on its way. You will soon start to feel more hopeful about getting what you want. Oh, I need that. Your belief that your dreams can manifest is working well and forget about the past. Mm. A few extra notes. It is a dark and veiled time when the moon is invisible and a time of rebirth. It's a time that witches do their work, making wishes and laying down intentions for the new cycle an intensely magical time when it's easier to pierce the veil to other worlds. 
So that's a lot of energies going on. Um, and that's just the new moon. Let's talk more about where the moon is. So this is a new moon in Virgo. So we have all of those energies of the new moon, new beginnings, fresh starts working in with the energies of Virgo. So let's talk about Virgo. Oh, Virgo, we love you. Virgo is an earth sign. Virgo is an earth sign and Virgo asks us to stay grounded and connected. Um, in Tarot, the card that represents Virgo is the Hermit card. So even a new moon is about hermiting in general, in general, but we also have this new moon in Virgo and Virgo is about hermiting. So this gives us the opportunity to turn within and examine our beliefs, our patterns of behavior and our desires. This is a time to release what doesn't serve us and to keep what does. I also want to mention, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking maybe, I don't know, because I haven't talked to Robin about what she's going to cover as far as the planetary things, um, but maybe she can speak to this a little bit deeper. I'm just going to give you a very brief overview. Um, I read that Nessus, I hope I'm saying that correctly, N-E-S-S-U-S -S -S is an asteroid, which is also present in Virgo during this time. And this asteroid particularly deals with ancestral healing. So now we've talked about the new moon being a time to go within and release those old things. We've talked about Virgo being a time to stay grounded and hermit and, and examine our beliefs. And now we also have Nessus present in the sign of Virgo. And this asteroid is asking us to do some ancestral healing. Deep stuff. So we have opportunities to heal past traumas and break ancestral cycles. Does that make anybody feel a little heavy? That's some big energies. Um, I'm going to read this quote. It's, it's from foreverconsciousness.com. It says, Nessus allows us to see the origin story of our shadow side. So that shadow work, that shadow side that we have, where does that come from? This asteroid, this energy that's present allows us to see the origin story of our shadow side. And it reminds us that even though the origins may not be our own, so this is why it's talking about ancestral healing, even though these origins may not be our own, we can either keep perpetuating the cycle or we can end it once and for all. So we have that going for us, um, which is a, of course we wanna do some ancestral healing, but ooh, that's a big thing, that's a big thing. Um, so Virgo, the energy of Virgo is also practical, very practical, very grounded. Um, when it is unbalanced, though, I'm going to mention this first. When it is unbalanced, there can be too much practical planning and stuck too deeply, rooted too deeply, grounded too deeply into your position. So it's like you can be grounded in a good way, or you can be grounded like thinking of your feet planted in the ground where you're not moving because you're way too deeply rooted into your whatever position you were in. So that would be the unbalanced view of Virgos. Virgos love to analyze things, and they're often sometimes a perfectionist. So be careful of analysis paralysis and becoming overly critical of yourself. So instead of letting those um, unbalanced energies overtake us, we want to allow the Virgo energy to help us. So like we talked about, Virgo energy is, is very much practical and grounded. So this is an excellent time to make practical plans for the future with the emphasis on moving forward. So as we feel this very grounded energy, we don't want to let that grounded energy make us feel stagnant. There's that word again. We want to allow this grounded practical energy to um, move us forward. How can we apply practical plans to what we're doing so that we can move forward and, and not be overly critical? So again, New moons are times to move forward, time to set our intentions so that we can move forward. This Virgo new moon is asking us to examine our past and stay grounded um, and examine our past comes with the ancestral healing stuff. Um, and we may feel a bit of an uncomfortable push and pull, like a, a push to move forward with this practical let's plan for the future, but also a pull to look backwards. 
So it leaves us in this teeter-tottery back and forth, what am I doing with my life kind of position, which can result if we let ourselves keep two steps forward, two steps back, it can result in a stal stalemate if we're unable to bring these energies into balance. So we don't want that. We want to be aware of these energies, which is step one, which is why everyone is here today. So yes, that's a good thing. But as we're dealing with these energies going forward, um, I suggest that you continually ask yourself, how can I use these energies to move forward? because these energies are going to ask you to look within, to examine your past, to examine your patterns. None of that is of any benefit if you sit in those energies. It's only of benefit if you allow that self-reflection to help you move forward. So continue, continually ask yourself in this very grounded, very practical energy, how can I use this to move forward? Um, this new moon, Virgo, is definitely a time to clear out the deeper, darker stuff. So new moons are always times <clears throat> to clear out, wipe the slate, slate clean. But this one, along with a lot of other, there's some, there's some other energies in the sky that I just, I know Robin is going to go over. So I didn't put it into my presentation. There's a lot of planets and stuff. Shit, shit's deep, y'all. This shit is deep. And it's asking us to dig deep. This is like, a deep cleaning where you're looking under the bed and you're getting the cobwebs off, not just a, a, a let me clean the room thing. This is a deep clean kind of energy um, that's asking you to do, do the deeper work. So clearing out deeper, darker things that have been holding you back. Does that resonate with anybody? Um, that sense that, oh my God, there's something that's been holding me back and I don't know what it is. Oh, that's such a, icky feeling and this energy is going to amplify that but it's doing it so that you have a chance to clear that out and move forward so i just want to give you one caveat seek help if you need it in whatever way you need it if it's that deep and you need therapy please go see therapy because this is asking you to revisit your path past and that can be very dramatic for some people um, if you need therapy, go see therapy. If you need a spiritual practitioner, see a spiritual practitioner. If you need to talk to a friend, talk to a friend. Don't do it alone. Um, I've been getting that message time and time again um, that all of these energies and not just this moon energy, but all of these collective energies that are pushing us forward, ask for help, ask for help. Almost every day I pull a card that says, ask for help. <clears throat> Um, we are not meant to walk this spiritual path alone. That's why we come together in gatherings like this. So ask for help if you need it. It's a cool thing to do. Okay, that's, uh, did I want to read anything else? Yes, I do. I want to read one more thing about this Virgo energy from my Virgo Zodiac deck. Um, Virgo is a mutable sign. So again, I want to say mutable means that it adapts to the situation. So again, we have that, oh, I think I'll go this way. No, I think I'll go this way kind of thing going on within this sign. So if you're feeling like you can't make heads or tails of what's going on, you are not alone. You are not alone. So Virgo is a mutable sign. Um, the realist, I'm sorry, the realistic of earth creates a stable eye of the storm center in the swirling mutable energy and suggest shutting out all of distractions in order to properly analyze the situation. That's that hermit mode. The key phrase I analyze clearly states the motivation. In this situation, ask what can be ignored and what must be attended to. Also ask, how can this energy move me forward? I just added that in there. The book doesn't say that. Um, being able to analyze is a great skill, um, as is paying attention to details, which are both Virgo energies. However, taken to an extreme, those gifts can become traps of pettiness and obsessiveness. Um, avoid being overly critical. So that is what I have to say about that. Did I want to read anything about new moon? New moon in Virgo. Oh, Virgo is also the sign of health. Attend to any health matters. It's a very practical, earthly grounded sign. Attend to any health matters. Um, 
Virgo is about getting your life in order. So that's what you need to do at this time of Virgo new moon. So that's what I have for my presentation on Virgo energies and new moon presentations, uh, new moon presentation, new moon energies. And now I'm going to turn it over to the wonderful astrologer, Ms. Robin Poole. Thank you. That was great. That was awesome. I love hearing the messages that are, are coming through for you. Does anybody have any questions they want to ask? Any responses they want to give or any situations that seem related to this that you want to mention before I, I go a little bit more into the astrology of the sky? Okay. All right. In that case, I'm going to share my screen and we will get going. So I want to mention, uh, just as a disclaimer, you guys can all hear me here, that I have three planets in Virgo. I have my sun, my Mercury, and my Mars, and they're all conjunct, which means they're basically within three degrees with each other of each other. So I have what's called a Virgo stellium. So I speak from experience <laughs> when it comes to Virgo energy, both the challenges and the difficulties. And I've had a really hard couple of weeks. And so if you hear a little bit of fatigue or frustration in my voice, please cut me some slack because my Virgo has been highly activated of late. Anyway, okay, so tropically, the new moon is in Virgo. Um, in the actual sky, it's in Leo. There's a gap because astrology was basically fixed 2000 years ago and the sky has shifted a little bit since then. So the tropical sign reflects our inner world and it's in sync with the equinoxes and the seasons. The sidereal sign reflects what actually is happening in our outer world and sidereally it's in Leo. So I've titled this refining the details of your vision. As Valerie said, Virgo is very detail oriented, very practical. We're gonna make that work for us here. All right, so here's the actual, this is the chart of the sky at the moment. Now, this is a tropical chart. So here we've got our moon and sun conjunct at 14 degrees Virgo. Um, the gap between the tropical and the sidereal is about 24 degrees. And so sidereally we're in Leo. Now I wanna mention, if you are in the central or mountain time zone, this is in your seventh house, which is the house of one-on-one -on -one relationships, partnerships, and endings. This is the chart for the central time zone, which I did in honor of Miss Valerie. If you are in the Eastern time zone, then this is in the sixth house, which is the house of daily activities, work, and health. And if you are in the Pacific time zone, it's in your eighth house, which is the house of uncovering deep truths, sex, money, death, taboos, dark secrets. So depending on where you are in the country, you may find that this energy is impacting one of these kind of life aspects. Now, last time you guys liked it when I drilled down into the decans. And so I did that again here. And the decans are basically a division of the sign into three parts. And they're called decans because each of them is 10 degrees. And they basically correspond to the other earth signs. Um, or the signs of the same elements. So the first decan is the Virgo sign, which is Mercury, which rules Virgo. The second decan is the Capricorn sign, I'm mean, sorry, the Capricorn sign, which is ruled by Saturn. And you can see that's where our moon is here. So it's in the decan of Saturn. And then the terms are something from Chaldean astrology. They're like 3000 years old. That's in the term of Venus. Sidereally, we are in the decan of Jupiter and the term of Mercury. So these decans, Jupiter, Mercury, Saturn, Venus, affect how this energy comes across in our lives. So I know that this is not a picture of the moon. This is a picture of the sun, but I picked it. Whoops. Oh, I'm a little out of order here. Where's my thing? There it is. Okay. So for the moon energies this time, we're looking at the earthly moon energies, right? The ones that go with the earth sign of Virgo. And that has to do with how the moon helps us sustain life on this planet. Um, fiddling with natural cycles, utilizing our environment, giving us comfort and security. We've had a lot of air signs lately. We did a double Aquarius last time. And now's the time to take all of that progressive energy, which might be putting us kind of on the ragged edge, right? Or pushing us to make progress. How are we gonna make that comfortable and secure and fit into our lives? Now the Virgo picture, one of the great things about my neighborhood is watching the, the Canada geese raise their goslings this year. And Virgo energy is like the stereotypical mom energy. Now, dads can also have this energy, of course. But if you imagine getting a bunch of um, elementary school kids out of the door in the morning, does everybody have their permission slip? Has everybody had breakfast? 
Does everybody have their homework? Is everybody on time? Does everybody have shoes? Like marshalling all of those details to actually practically make it happen. This is our inner world and we've got Saturn and Venus helping us out. So I titled this fun with solid detail. So Venus is about passion and enjoyment and what really moves you. And Saturn is about making it solid and Virgo is about the details. So figuring out how is this all going to actually work in real life? Making it practical and helpful and enjoying evidence of your success because Virgo is going to make it happen. So find those places where you're like, wow, I actually am healing. Wow, I actually am better. Well, I actually do understand that more and celebrate that so that you don't get overwhelmed by all of the progress that needs to be made. And then sidereally, we're in Leo here, right? And um, I titled this Communicating Your Authentic Adventure. When I think about Leo, I think about the late comic Robin Williams, who just had this like zany, self-expressive energy. He had Mercury in Leo, he had Uranus in Leo, and Leo was his midheaven, which means that Leo was his public face. You're just, you got stuff you got to say, and it's going to come out, and you're looking for an audience, and you're having fun with it. That's quintessential Leo. And Jupiter is a very auspicious planet also. It's the planet of adventuring and expanding your boundaries and going beyond. And of course, Mercury is about communication. So you may be making progress and feel really excited and want to share about growth. Leo is looking for an audience. Creating a pep talk. Um, maybe encouraging other people with messages about the good things you've discovered or the opportunities you're having. We've had a lot of heavy energy and there's, there's more heavy energy on the way because our next full moon is conjunct Pisces. So any, any part of you that's like having a good time, wanting to connect, wanting to communicate, enjoying this, finding your passion, you want to fan that into flame now to really balance out some of the challenges. All right, so if we look at the sky a little bit more, um, uh, closely, we've got a conjunction with Mars coming up. Now, they're 14 degrees apart. This is the chart for, for the, the uh, Monday. But um, you may find that there's some struggle going on. This may not be all smooth sailing, especially if you've got deep stuff coming up. I have had a really rocky week. And so just know that this is your moment in the spiritual personal growth gym. It's not going to be this hard forever. And, and cut yourself some slack for this. You guys might remember that we had a trine to Uranus in Taurus on the last um, full moon. And guess what? It's back. Uranus is about shocking change and Taurus is about comfort. So that means the universe is continuing to push us in the direction of, um, of unexpected things and of change and of making progress. Is, that's still happening. But now we have a chance to make it much more practical with this Virgo energy. And we also have an opposition with Nessus and Neptune. Nessus is on the other end of this axis. You can see we've got this red line going across here. And this is, this is creating like this push-pull that Valerie was talking about, where on the one hand, we're like, we want it to be practical. We want there to be real steps. We want to feel grounded. But on the other hand, we've got dreamy Neptune and Nessus in Pisces. Neptune is like the giant cosmic radar dish. This is where the messages come in. It's where inspiration comes from, but it's also kind of dreamy and not very coherent sometimes. So, um, so you may feel like you're on this teeter-totter where it's like, am I practical or am I inspired? And things are kind of going up and down. So you wanna be aware of the, the play of energies and not go too far to either direction. All right, so constructive ways to work with this. The Virgo can-do attitude and the Leo enthusiasm are a dynamite combination. This is a time when you can make all kinds of things happen in your life. Um, Leo's super charismatic and the combination of charisma with practicality can be super persuasive. So if you need to get other people on board, this is a great way to do it. Tangible progress is inevitable because Virgo is gonna make sure that everybody has their permission slip and everybody has breakfast and everybody has their shoes. So. This is a time when you can really look forward to seeing some things happen in your life and actually experiencing growth. And some things that can be challenging here though, is that Virgo in its drive to get all the details right can be kind of perfectionistic. And that can sometimes dampen your excitement, especially if you end up on this Neptune teeter-totter where you're all inspired and then Virgo comes in and is like, all right, but how are we gonna make that work? And you're like, I don't really know. And then you can start to feel overwhelmed. So. Just, you know, don't, don't let the need to figure everything out, like burst, burst your bubble, burst your balloon. 
Um, Virgo can also tend to prioritize what is helpful over what is authentic. And there's this impulse to be helpful and to assist people. Um, the actor Keanu Reeves has a lot of Virgo. And when his sister got diagnosed with leukemia, he donated $5 million and changed around his entire shooting schedule so he could be with her with, during her treatment. So he donated $5 million to a leukemia foundation. So Virgo really wants to help, but sometimes we can end up helping in ways that are not authentic for us. And then because Virgo has always thought through all the details and Leo is so enthusiastic, you can end up with a, I know what's best momentum. I'm gonna save the day, I have a plan, I know what to do. And then you can end up like steamrolling other people who may have their own plans or their own ideas or their own resistance to your plans. So make sure that you're creating like um, an open and, and communicative environment so that you have your enthusiasm and ideas, but you're, you're able to let other people come in as well. So these are my suggestions for how to integrate the Virgo and Leo new moon. Don't let the quest for details dampen your enjoyment. Record your whole vision and then develop the practical steps. Remember that anything that comes in with Neptune may not be coherent, may be fragmented, may not make sense, but just write it all down or draw a picture or talk about it with a friend and then figure out what you're gonna do about it. Don't like, don't dampen the vision because you haven't figured it all out. Embrace any unexpected elements and then stay calm and minimize the stress and struggle. So if you have to light candles or smudge or take a walk outside or take a nice bath or take an extra nap, do what you have to do to make this a smooth um, time for yourself as much as possible so that you don't end up with that, that Mars energy kind of running ragged. Okay, then I have my usual thank you to SlidesGo for this template. And then also there's my contact information at the bottom if you would like to contact me. And then this is obviously what I just said. So does anybody have any questions or thoughts that they wanna ask or, or is this resonating with people? Does this sound like what your couple of weeks have been like? Okay, Valerie's nodding, good. Anybody else? Heck yes, okay. <laughs> good to know. I was telling Valerie I was lying in bed this morning and I'm like, I can't even get out of bed. I'm gonna to have to cancel on Valerie. Nobody will see my beautiful presentation. And I'm like, okay, moon coming up onto Mars, moon coming up onto Mars. I just have to get a cup of tea, start slow, have oatmeal. I, I brought my dragon familiar with me to keep me company. <laughs> um, anybody have any questions or thoughts or would you like to look back at any of the previous slides? Okay. I just wanted to agree that energy. Um, I've been like super tired in the middle of the yes. day for yes. like no reason. Like I'm getting enough sleep, I'm doing all the things and I'm super tired. And it didn't dawn on me until this morning. Of, oh, that's what it is. It's that energy. It's that new moon. It's that hermit. It's that you just want to close yourself off and figure shit out on your own. Yeah. So, so yeah, all of that. Yeah. What Spirit said to me was, he said, the work that you do when you're resting, when you're taking a nap, when you go to lie down and you don't instantly fall asleep and you start thinking over what's going on with you, that is useful and valuable work. Don't fall into the trap of just thinking that work is like what you do when you get out of bed. And now I'm working. Now I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm moving in a couple of days and I'm trying to pack and I'm exhausted and I'm like, how am I going to pack? And spirit was like, that work is the work of growth and the work of integrating all of the progress into your actual life. So make sure that you honor that and value that as well as you know, the quote unquote productivity of packing boxes or, or doing your job or making breakfast or whatever it is. <laughs> I love hearing that Robin because I'm getting <laughs> the same message. It's so funny. Um, yeah. My mind comes across saying that your vibrational work is even more valuable than your physical work. And so I'm just like, okay, okay. I can feel good about taking this time to rest and doing all this inner work. So, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, I'm gonna stop sharing then. We can move on to our next stage. Yeah, I definitely been feeling that too. Cause like, oh, uh, well, y'all know that I'm nomadic now. And like, <clears throat> it's been one challenge after another, after another, after another. Like yesterday I was exercising and I don't know if you can see, but my glasses fell off my face and busted in half. I've never had that happen before. 
I've this month I've had two flat tires. I've had to replace my brakes already. It's been rough, man. Like I know if if I'm feeling it, y'all are feeling it too, because that's usually how we roll. But it's just wow. This week this month has been crazy, crazy for for both of us. So <laughs> Sending you lots of love, Sky, and everyone else who may be experiencing their own version of crazy. Yeah, it's a lot, it's yeah. a lot, it's a lot. But we're here. We're here and we come together to uplift each other and to hopefully uplift those who may not be aware of these energies. So there's always a bright side to that. Um, no, the, the other thing go ahead. I would say to that is that we have to have confidence and faith that we will be given the help we need to deal with these energies. I woke up this morning and I was like, I can't handle this. This is too much for me. And Source was like, you got to have so much more faith in yourself and in all the allies I've provided for you. Even, even stuffed animal allies, right? <laughs> even like my mug of hibiscus tea to help me be like focused and, you know, like the world is full of allies for us, but we have to seek that, that support. And it's going to be different for everybody, which is actually part of what your astrological chart is helpful for. We're going to be doing some deep dive teachings on how to use your astrological chart to figure out like what your allies are and what to do with all these messages and, and things like that. Yes, I cannot wait yep. for those. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yep. I'm glad you yep. mentioned that because that kind of leads right into what I'm going to say next, which I posted in the chat, but I'm going to say it out loud because this is going to be recorded and posted and the chat won't be available. So Robin does astrological readings. I want you guys to be super aware of that because you might need her help in all of the things that she just talked about, figuring out how these energies relate to you specifically in where your chart is. Um, her information is in the chat. You would need to email her to schedule a time. She does all her services on pay what you want or pay what you can on a donation basis. Aside from these astrological chart readings, she also does other readings and other services. And her website is also there in the chat, which is spiritsaid.com for those of you watching the recording. Um, one of the new offerings that I'm doing and that I do believe I will continue to do is moon readings. Um, this particular one is a new moon. It's, I call it moon energies, clarity readings. It's a psychic reading along with a one card pull. And this is going to be specific to you messages from spirit guides or the tarot and also psychic readings specific to you on how you can work better with these energies. I want to note, this is not an astrological reading. This is a psychic and tarot and messages from spirit guides readings as far as what I provide. And it's for only $10. And what I do is I record it specifically and personalize it for you and send you a recording of that. So with that being said, because there is a time frame on getting this information out to you before the new moon um, is over with, there is only limited availability on how many readings I can do and record. So if you're interested in that, I highly suggest you follow the link um, to schedule that. And then if you're not interested in any readings and you would like to donate to keep these um, events going on, feel free to donate, but just know that donations are not required, never required. We are just happy to see you here, but we like to give you a way to donate if you feel so moved. So with that being said, we're gonna move on to the rituals. So the things that I'm going to talk about, again, I'll do the basic rituals. I'll turn it over to Robin, who always has amazing rituals, who I'm just like, ooh, I got to do that. So let me start with mine. My ritual is going to focus, and this might be, this might be selfishly mo motivated, but it's because what I need to work on to work with these energies, my ritual is about <clears throat> the ancestral healing but more specifically about healing traumas from my past. So my ritual, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a letter to my younger self to heal a past wound or a trauma. What um, questions to ask yourself is, what would you want your younger self to know about this situation? And how would you parent your younger self through this situation? Like, what would you say to your younger self as they're dealing with whatever this is um, to help them get through this in a more loving way? So once I've written that letter, 
I'm gonna set it out with some rose quartz. Now I plan on doing this before the new moon because I want to release these energies, love them, heal them, release them so that when the new moon comes, I can write intentions for how I want to grow forward after having released these. So um, I'm gonna set this letter out with some rose quartz. Why rose quartz, Valerie? Because rose quartz is the crystal that deals with unconditional love. And so I want to send the energy of unconditional love to my former younger self to heal those wounds and to move beyond them and to release them. You can use any other crystal that works for you. Um, look for a transformational crystal or a healing crystal. I'm choosing rose quartz because I feel like Unconditional love is one of the greatest, greatest healing qualities um, out there. Um, also, you can use like an earth friendly paper. I know Robin knows more about this than I do. I just said earth friendly paper um, and to write your letter on. And then because Virgo is an earth energy, you can take that letter and bury it and then water it so that the letter and the intention so that you're releasing it back into the earth so that you're working with the earth energy of Virgo. And so that as you release that, those energies and get rid of those energies, you're also providing fertile ground for your new future to spring forth. So you're releasing the past, using that as fertilizer for your new future to spring forth. So that's why I thought, you know, I should put this on a letter and actually bury it and like water it and let it be fertilizer for my new future. Um, so that's one thing. Um, I, I just really want to sit with this idea of releasing those past and moving beyond and not just releasing and writing it down and doing all of the things that I mentioned, but not telling that story anymore. That's been huge for me. If I'm going to release it, I need to release it. And when someone asks me about this thing and why I am the way, the way I am, I can't tell that story anymore if I've truly released it. I can't say I'm this way because when I was six, my mama didn't buy me that can't. I can't tell that trauma story anymore if I wanna truly release it. So that's what I'm gonna work on as far as trying to work with these energies, trying to move past um, doing some deeper, deeper dives on the, on that mucky shit that's holding me back and then releasing it in a way that's going to allow me to move forward. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I think that's it. Robin, take it away. Okay, all right, great. I think that was amazing. Um, and I will mention that as far as um, earth-friendly paper, white paper has bleach on it, so it's not as earth-friendly. But if, you, if that's all you had and you still wanted to be concerned about that, you could write the letter on regular paper or you could dictate it. And then you can take a leaf and use a pencil and write like the first letter of every sentence in the letter on the leaf or something like that, or create a sigil or a picture that somehow embodies the meaning of the letter and then bury that if you were concerned about burying regular paper. But I think that's really beautiful. I think that's a great a great ritual. And it's funny, it's Valerie and I do these completely independently. And I think once I present my ritual, you'll see there's actually quite a bit of overlap between these two. Um, so can I get a show of hands for those of you who are on camera, who has heard of the Sabian symbols? Anybody here heard of Sabian symbols? Valerie's heard of them a little. Okay, I'm going to introduce these. We're going to be doing a deep dive on Sabian symbols because they are amazing, amazing aspects of astrology. And my, my uh, ritual today involves Sabian symbols. So we're gonna learn a little bit about it and then we'll, we'll talk more about it at a later date. Um, so let me get my thing back out here. Um, okay, so the Sabian symbols um, were channeled by, oops, sorry, hopefully, there we go, Sabian symbol, okay. So the Sabian symbols basically are a different symbol for every degree of the zodiac. And they were channeled by this lady in San Diego in the 1920s. Her name was Elsie Wheeler. She was confined to a wheelchair with rheumatoid arthritis. And there was a famous astrologer who decided, heard of her, she was a psychic and a clairvoyant, and he admired her spunk apparently. And he asked her to psychically channel a symbol for every degree of the zodiac. So you may have thought, oh, well, I just have Mercury in Virgo. And then now you're like, oh, there are decans. Oh, I have Mercury in, in the second decan of Virgo. But now you can dial that down even more 
and look up the Sabian symbol for your specific degree. And this is the Sabian symbol for um, this particular conjunction, uh, the new moon, which is at 14 degrees Virgo. And it is a fine lace ornamental handkerchief. Now you may be like, all right, what does that have to really do with anything? And for that, there is a great website called www.sabiansymbols.com. And if you go to the symbol lookup tab, she has a whole interpretation of what the symbols mean. And I've looked at a lot of Sabian symbol websites and I think this one is the best. Um, so the fine lace ornamental handkerchief symbolizes emotions and the delicacy of feeling and a willingness to show your emotions, right? Because people like use a handkerchief to cry in and, and um, wipe their tears. It can indicate issues or problems with being emotional and crying, or that you're somebody who's good at providing a shoulder to cry on or a kind ear to listen. And it can also symbolize tokens of our past that give security and joy. And I don't know if any of you guys have been having trouble with emotions and the delicacy of feelings in the last week. I cried twice yesterday, including once so loud that I was worried that I was actually disturbing the neighbors downstairs. And it was exactly what Valerie was talking about, which is this stuff coming up from the past and remembers of my parents and, and all that sort of thing. So the fine lace ornamental handkerchief seems a little odd, but once you start actually looking at what it means, I find that Sabian symbols are incredible. There's been so many things in my family where I'm like, why is dad obsessed by this? Why can't I stop thinking about this? And then I look at my Sabian symbol and it just explains so much. And I will mention, by the way, that the background photo here is my grandmother's lace tablecloth. Anyway, so that's this Sabian symbol about bringing up feelings and providing a shoulder to cry on or needing a shoulder to cry on is informing how this moon is affecting us. So I wanted to do a ritual that had to do with this. So step one for the ritual is to think, whom can I help? Virgo is very much about helping others. So I don't want this ritual just to be for us. Like Valerie's talking about helping her, her, her child self heal from trauma. Sorry, this should update in just a second. There we go. Okay, whom can I help? And then the trick for this ritual is to think of somebody who needs help that you think you also need. Valerie wants to heal her child self. She also wants to heal her actual self. You know, whatever it is that you feel like you need help from, think who else is in my world who also needs this type of help? And then the thing to do is to share an emotional memory with that person or maybe give them a cherished and beautiful object like the lace handkerchief or help somebody else feel secure and loved. So the way that you could do this, you could make a phone call, send a text message or an email or gasp an actual card through the actual mail with an actual stamp, which is really a wonderful thing. You could gift somebody an inherited or a handcrafted item that would be bringing in the Leo energy because Leo is about creativity. So make your neighbor an apple pie you know, create a, a, a card or a gift for somebody. Or maybe you could make a charitable donation to a group that involves a need that you have. Like you are very bolstered by the companionship of animals. So you donate money to your local charitable animal hospital, something like that. And then as you're helping this person with this text or email or apple pie, or passing on a piece of grandma's jewelry that you don't really like, but you think would be perfect for so-and-so, imagine all of that energy coming to heal yourself as well, because Virgo is about healing ourselves and others. And then under the new moon, go out and ask for the triple blessing for you and the person you reached out to, to come back to you. In other words, whatever blessing I gave to this person by trying to help them, I would like three times as much of this blessing to come back to them and to come back to me. And that way we're engaging our divine connection, our higher self, our spirit guides to take the blessing that we're giving to ourselves and others and then expand that beyond what we're able to do. So what happened to me as I was working through this ritual, I had a friend who's just gotten a, a health diagnosis that's pretty rough. And we were talking about her prayer life. Um, she's a Christian, so she was talking about praying to God. And I was asking her how the prayer is going. Oh, Julia said, why three times? So I picked three times because the triple goddess symbol symbolizes the three phases of the moon, the full moon, the waxing moon, and the waning moon. And that's why I picked three. But honestly, that just is what came to me. It doesn't have to be three per se. You should feel free to alter this 10 times or 20 times or you know whatever, whatever works for you. 
Anyway, so my friend was talking about praying and she said, I don't think praying is going to change the outcome of her diagnosis. Um, I will answer that question in just a second, um, Natasha. Uh, I don't think praying is gonna change the outcome. And I was kind of shocked because I never thought that the purpose of prayer mainly was to change the outcome. And so what I did is I sent her a list of 12 different ways you can pray when you're not feeling well. And because I feel like there's so much more, like what can I learn from this? How can I grow as a result of this? How can I be comforted? How can I see how spirit is supporting me? You know, that sort of thing. And so I sent her this long list of different ways to pray. And then of course I felt really terrible this week. And I'm like, wow, I really need that list. <laughs> and then I'm, on Monday I'll walk out and be like, all right, I need, I need more blessings in this area. By the way, if you are interested in this list, send me an email or give me your email in the chat and I will send you a copy of the list. Um, anyway, okay, so Natasha asked whether the triple goddess symbol was more prevalent now. And I believe it is, yes, it, it is a modern symbol essentially. And it's based on the idea of triple goddesses, which are very old and Greek goddesses and Roman goddesses were triple goddesses, but the actual symbol itself, I think, was popularized in a book that was written in the early 20th century. So it's kind of like a modern take on the concept of a triple goddess, whereas the concept is much older. But I don't, I, I'm not an expert in this. So if anybody else wants to chime in or say something about it, they should feel free to do that. And that's the end of my ritual here. Okay, anybody have any thoughts or questions or, or, or contributions? Oh, you're welcome, Natasha. Okay. Yay. Thank you, Robin. I love that. Like Robin said, no lie. We don't, we don't come together and, and brainstorm on these. I create my portion, she creates her portion, and we don't hear about it until we join this meeting. And it's always so interesting to see how what we, what we present is so spirit-led and so in line with each other. I love it. I love it so much. Um, okay. I don't think we have any comments. Pause for just a moment. Nope, looking good. Okay, we're going to go into the guided meditation portion of this. And I will say this guided meditation is about, um, what's the best way to say it? Um, revisiting our inner child or revisiting our, our younger self in a very gentle and loving way. So have no fear. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so let's get ready for the meditation portion. And I'm going to make sure everyone is muted. Please keep yourself muted. Camera on, camera off, doesn't matter. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. And we're going to get relaxed and take two very deep cleansing breaths just to settle ourselves in and calm ourselves down. One in and out. And two, deep breath in and let it out. Now, if it's comfortable to do so, place your feet flat on the floor, relax yourself, drop your shoulders, relax your eyelids, just get very comfortable. Relaxation is the goal here. Continue breathing deeply, whatever way feels comfortable for you. And if your mind tends to wander during this meditation, that's okay. As long as it's a peaceful wandering, you can follow it. If it's distracting, just bring your thoughts back to your breath. Nice intentional breathing in and out. Now I want you to see yourself in a very peaceful, serene neighborhood. Something out of a storybook. The most 
beautiful place you could imagine living or being right now. And it's very calm. There's no cars driving up and down in this neighborhood. Very quiet and peaceful. And you start to walk down the sidewalk in this neighborhood, taking in the sights, feeling very much at ease, looking around at how beautiful it is, looking at the houses, noticing the details on the houses, how well tended to the gardens are, Maybe you notice some pets in the yard. Everything is just so lovely in this neighborhood. You walk a little further down, still paying attention to the houses and the homes around you. And the next house you see seems very familiar. So you stop at the sidewalk that leads up to this house. And you turn so that you're facing the house. And suddenly you recognize that this house, this home is the home of your childhood. Maybe it's an apartment, a house, doesn't matter. It's your childhood home. You're excited to go in and have a look around. As you walk down the sidewalk to the front door, you slowly open that front door and go inside. It's as if you've walked through a portal. Now that you're standing inside this home, you recognize the smells, the look of the house, and it's the same as when you were younger. You hear voices, siblings, parents, caretakers. Somewhere in this home, they're all present. As you walk in and start to explore this home, you begin to notice that also present is the younger version, version of yourself. Where does this younger version hang out? Are they in the kitchen, their bedroom? You go looking for them. when you find this younger version of yourself, you realize that you've stepped in to the exact time right after something very life altering happened. Only you know what that was. Only you know what that time period was how young you were, what you just finished dealing with, the emotions that you're feeling regarding that incident. And you see your younger self troubled, troubled by what just happened. You don't need to ask them what happened because you have a knowing. You lived it, you remember. But now you are the adult in this situation. You are your current version of yourself, visiting with this younger troubled version of you. Now you're going to tell your younger self 
what you wish you had known at that time. Explain to them how to move past this incident. But most of all, love them no matter what. Perhaps this was a time where they didn't feel understood, where they didn't feel loved, where they felt lost. Now is your chance to show them unconditional love and to share with them the wisdom of what's happened now that you've moved past this. Allow yourself to help your younger self to heal and move beyond this incident. I'm gonna give you some time to chat with your younger self about whatever just happened. After talking for just a while with your younger self and comforting them, making them feel better, I want you to repeat these words to your younger self. You are loved. You are worthy. You are important. You are strong. And I love you. Give your younger self a big hug. Allow the divine light to come down through you and as you hung, hug your younger self, bask them in that divine light and that unconditional divine love. Washing away any sadness, any fear, any feelings of unworthiness. Filling your current version and your younger self with love and light. Imagine how your younger self in that time frame would feel after hearing those words from you, after getting that hug, after feeling that unconditional divine love. That is where you are going to leave that version of you in that better space in that healed energy, wrapped in love, and you no longer need to return to the hurt version of your younger self.
Now you know it's time to leave. Your younger self is okay. They're happy, they're stronger, they're loved. You walk out of the house and you return back to the neighborhood. And as you stand on the street, I want you to acknowledge that at any time you can revisit this place in any time frame, under any circumstances, to give your younger self messages of healing and love. Take a deep breath in and exhale slowly. Realizing that you've sent all of the energy through time and space, and that you've healed that version of you and also this version of you. Thank the divine for this opportunity to heal and release. Take another deep breath in and exhale slowly as we sit in gratitude for this moment of peace. And one more really deep breath in and exhale slowly. Wiggle your toes, move around. And when you're ready, you can return to the room. Wow, I loved how practical that was. Very, very Virgo <clears throat> and surprisingly related to the lace handkerchief. <laughs> Did you see a lace handkerchief when you were in your house? <laughs> the um, no, no, my mother did not have those sorts of things. Ah, hug to you, Misha. Emotional comfort and support to Misha. Yes. Yes. I got so much. I mean, I've been doing so much work on this over the last couple of years, but yeah. And, and I've I worked on this, um, doing a lot of EFT work, uh, uh, but, um, yeah, just bringing this all in, um, I mean, it was a healing bawling, um, because, it was the first time my younger self bawled uh, along with me and it felt like it was a catharsis and like cleaned and cleansed it all out so I could fill that up in her with loving, healing light uh, and to where it was truly healed for the first time. So that, that was huge. Yeah. I love that. I love that. It's all about love. Love is the most healing power. Um, when I first did this meditation, it wasn't on purpose. Source guided me. It was almost like a vision. And there were specific points throughout my life where I visited this version and this version of this version. And I went through that healing process where I just loved myself and told her how how valuable she was um i will say i've revisited this a few times um so that might be something you all want to do might not do what suits you um but whenever those old ideas come back up i revisit this and i tell myself no that's that's not what happened it's almost like i rewrote history literally i'm like no that's not what happened remember you were there you were there loving yourself and explaining things that's that's the that's your new reality that's what happened um so kind of sitting with that realizing that you can heal your you, it's a it's a thing y'all it's not just a meditation it's a thing you can heal yourself you can time travel in this sense of going back and revisiting those things in an effort to heal, not in an effort to relive, in an effort to heal. Um, so I hope that has helped you. I'll see a lot of comments. Um, Natasha sending healing, yes, yes. And so um, 
I guess the overall thing I want to say is moon energy, it brings up emotions, period. And now we've got the Virgo energy talking about being grounded and dealing with our past. There is a kind, gentle, loving way to deal with these energies. It doesn't have to knock us on our ass. Um, even when you ball, I just want to say this. Here's my view on crying. Crying is a releasing of resistance. Anytime you're crying, celebrate that shit because that means you're letting go of something. It doesn't mean something's wrong. It doesn't mean, oh my God, why am I crying? It's like, woohoo, I just let some shit go. So celebrate that. You, you, if you cried, hugs to you, but you just released a lot of resistance. You just shed a lot of shit. Let it go. Let it lay where it is. Do not pick it back up. Go into this new moon energy and write a new script. Write a new, if, if, if you feel so inclined, let your new intention be that I have rewritten my past and I'm no longer going to tell this story. And when I tell this story, I'm going to tell the story of how loved I was in that moment because you loved yourself in that moment. So yeah. Yay. Any other comments um, or anyone to share or questions? I want to share something that my therapist told me about tears. She said that when you cry because like you're peeling an onion, your tears are mostly salt. But when you cry because you are sad, your tears are full of stress hormones. And it's part of your body's way of literally cleansing the, the hormones that are caused by the stress of your sadness out from your body. So it's very healthy to cry and let the tears out because it's not just psychologically releasing it's actually about physically releasing those chemicals from your body wow i have never heard that and i freaking love that Thanks. on a physical yeah. scientific releasing hormones wow talk about a flush that's an energy energy and physical flush i love right. that oh my gosh okay sky i see you have your hand raised there yeah Y'all brought me back to a time in my life that I didn't even think any trauma had happened. But I also realized at the same time is when my family started dissolving and having a lot of issues and dad was really being secretive about things. And just being able to go back to that time and being able to tell myself, you know, that I love you, you know, things are gonna get better keep going with where I'm at. Yeah, I was in tears, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> That's still in tears. I'm not sure where they went, but I have someone to take care of for them. <laughs> hugs to your friend as well. She looks very emotional. So hugs to you both. You guys take care of yourself. That was, I didn't mean for it to be that heavy, but I kind of did because we need to flush that deeper stuff out. We need to get rid of it. Um, take care of yourself. Be gentle with yourself. Continue to release um, and, and joyfully welcome in this new moon energy where we get to literally rewrite things and reset our intentions. Let's see. Oh, I love that, Elizabeth. Oh, I love that, Elizabeth. That's beautiful. Oh, wow. Can I, can we read that for anybody who, for anybody who can't see the chat? I, I'd like to read what Elizabeth said, if that's okay. Yes. My younger self was too young for words. I just held her. And now I can reminisce about having a fairy godmother that would visit and comfort me and hold me. I just think that's that's genius, becoming your own fairy godmother. That's beautiful. A really beautiful concept. Rewriting the script. I hope you guys, if nothing else, I hope you take away from this um, example or this meditation a new memory. I hope somewhere in the recesses of your mind you have a new memory of that incident and you remember yourself being there and loving yourself, or even you remember a small voice being there and telling you that you're loved. Oh, okay, any questions or anything um, going forward that you guys would like to know about events or the next moon? Uh, should we read? 
should we re-explain the next ceremony? Because I think we had some people join afterwards. Robin, wanna, I'll let you explain it, how we're gonna do the next full moon ceremony. So the next full moon is in Pisces and it is conjunct Neptune. So that means it's probably gonna have a lot of really powerful energies, dreams, visions, cosmic connection, that kind of stuff. But Valerie's not available, she's on a trip. So what we've decided to do is she and I are gonna record in advance our presentation and our rituals. And then we're gonna schedule an event and I'm gonna be there and I'm gonna play the recording of the ritual or the event and the meditation. And then in between that, we'll stop the recording and we'll have time for people to share and to ask questions and to discuss. Um, I really want this not to be just the Valerie and Robin show because I feel like all together is where everybody's contributions, that's how we become a supportive community for each other. But I also don't want Valerie, I, I, last one I taught from a hotel room and it was kind of crazy. And so anyway, that's our, that's our plan for that. So I'll be here and then we'll, um, we'll have plenty of time for discussion and, and all that sort of thing. And Valerie's gonna schedule it just as like, like on her regular meetup, I think, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. So. And it'll That's be our before, plan. before the full moon. So you guys have a chance to incorporate and work with the energies and set your rituals up. Yep. And if there's any topics or areas of interest or things you like today that you want to make sure we do again, please let us know because we want to take your feedback so that we're providing an event that really meets your needs as well as what we are doing. And Misha, yes, that's when I'm in Denver. Yes. Cool. All right, well, I want to, I know it's a little bit early, but um, I do want to open it up. If anyone has any comments whatsoever about this moon, questions, hey, I like the celebration, whatever, um, just because we have a little bit of extra time or any questions about what's going on. Um, now's your chance. Speaker forever, hold your peace. I'm kidding, whatever. No, nothing? Okay. Is the actual new moon tonight, today? No. Okay. Monday. It's Monday. Monday this Okay. Six. Yep. Okay. So I got a little time to write a letter because I love the idea of writing the letter to my uh, younger self um, and just reinforcing uh, what uh, occurred in the meditation. And um, the Dragon Tree Spa sells some paper that I think has like basil embedded in the paper. Uh, and um, so I think I'm gonna use that uh, intention paper and I'll bury that. Who knows if it'll, you know, sprout or not, but it is um, unbleached um, intention paper. So should be fine for my ground. It's better for it than the weeds. So <laughs> <laughs> I like it, I like it, cool. Yay. Okay. Um, check the chat one more time. I have a new website, tarotunicornsandcoffee.com. There's information. There's a members only page on there with some specials you might want to check out. And if you join me from the Aqua Release Inn, I dropped a link for my meetup, which is Tarot Unicorns and Coffee Meetup, so that you can join there and be aware of the next moon celebration. And Robin has put her email there. Again, reach out to Robin if you would like a reading. Um, she or, or you can visit her website, spiritset.com, but you're still going to need to reach out, her, reach out to her by email. So just reach out to her by email. Um, okay, I think that's all I have for you. Uh, this recording will be posted, hopefully before the new moon actually happens. And we'll also get a copy of Robin's slides for those of you who are interested in reviewing that as well. All right, thank you, everyone. Go ahead, Robin, Do, were you going to say something? Yeah, I got, I got one more thing to say, which was a message that came in for me, for everybody, which is don't get distracted by the parts of your progress that you don't understand yet. The energy of the Virgo is about taking practical steps with the part that you do understand or the part that you do feel comfortable with. And so don't worry about the parts that you're like, I don't really don't get that part. Like, don't let that distract you from actually taking practical steps to ground in the areas of change that have been made clear to you that. or that you can see unfolding. All right, that's it. That's for me. <laughs> I needed that. Thank you. I'm glad you added that because I needed that. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful <sighs> weekend and a wonderful new moon on Monday.